You know, we are celebrating White History Month. Did y'all know that? Who did not know about this? Only two, three. You didn't know about it? And you didn't know about it? No. What July has been deemed White History Month. White people mind. White people mind. And doesn't July feel white? <laughs> <laughs> Let's think about it. It's fresh. It's in the middle of nowhere. It's 4th of July. It's vacation in time. It's takeoff work. Does it feel white? Or is it just me? It feels white? No? Even when I was a kid, I thought July was an excellent time of the year because of the 4th of July. You see people, you know, waving flags and celebrating. You don't have to go to work. You're on vacation. It just felt right. And so and the reason I started White History Month is because it's white people are being treated so unfairly. It, they are being treated so unfairly, it's ridiculous. It's evil. And most of them have lost the courage to stand up and fight back. The men are afraid. The women are trying a little bit, but they are afraid. And they are afraid because of one word, and that word is racism. That's all. And then if they are called racist, they lose their jobs, they lose their careers, and they are afraid of that. That means more to them than what is right. And as a result, they are being taken over. And I used to resent white people after I moved to L.A., not while growing up in Alabama on the plantation. I started listening to this lie about racism because I had that anger at the time. And so I was in a fallen state. And everyone who has anger are in a fallen state and you believe into lies and you don't know it until you wake up. But I believed into that lie that white people were my enemy and that they were holding me back because of my color. And I totally believed that. I started saying that. But once I woke up, I realized I had been lied to. And we've been lied to by so many things. Uh, th this so-called issue between the blacks and the whites and others, it's a false issue. It's a non-issue. It's an illusion. White people are having the same problem and issues that every other race are having. They, they want to be married, want to have a family, want to have a job, want to get along with everybody, leave me alone. You know, and that's the same thing other races are going through too. But they think white people got something special going on. And it's a lie, just a lie. And my concern now is that what happened in South Africa, what happened here, is that um, after a while, the people of color will take over, POCs. Who knows what POCs are? Oh, good. People of color. And the people of color hate the whites. And when they take over the government, as they have done in South Africa, they're going to slaughter the whites. They really are. And that's what they're doing to the white farmers and others in South Africa. And the false hatred of white people, if we allow these people to take over America, we're going to have the same issue here. Unfortunately, there's no way else to go. We, somehow or another, whites, I don't know what they're going to do if they don't wake up right now. I've been saying for 20-something years, white people need to wake up. Because you are hated and you've been taught by, you've been, other people of color uh, have been taught to hate you. There was a woman from, uh, the, from uh, the Congos or somewhere, climbed the uh, Statue of Liberty. Did you see that? And on, on the 4th of July. This woman is a horrible, evil woman. And black as the ace of space. And it was up to me, I would have, had I gone up on that statue to get her, I would have pretended that she slipped out of my hands. <laughs> right, right over the end of the thing, right? And just let her fall to the ground and kill herself. How do you come to a country from another country that is corrupt and evil? They slaughter children over there, cut off their limbs, rape women, and all that kind of stuff. And this woman is in our country protesting against us. How do you do something like that? And she had the black power sign. I would have, if I didn't drop her off the ledge, <laughs> I had another great idea. <laughs> I would have put her in one of those uh, war planes that travel really fast. Like, we need to go to Iraq right now. We could be there in an hour. 
I would have done that and, sh and took her back over to <laughs> Congo and just opened that bottom door of the plane and left, shot her out right back on her ground where she came from. That's how we have to do these people. We can no longer let these people come in and just take over the country and be nasty. It's like, that's why I don't let family members come and stay more than two week at my, weeks at my house. Because after the second week, they start to take over. They don't wash the dishes. They run your telephone bill up. They eat up all your food. And then when you get home from work, they're sitting there looking at you like you're crazy. So you have to get rid of them. Otherwise, they take over. But white people are under attack. Have anybody else seen this or just me? Only the colored people see it. <laughs> Do the whites here see it? You see it. You see it. Do you see that happening to white people? T take the mic right there. No. You don't see it happening? White people not hate it? I don't know. You don't know? Do you see it happening? Yeah, I do. You do? A little bit. A little bit? It's like really happening. And then the unfortunate thing is, white people are not making babies. And so in 20 something, they're going to be the minorities. It's over. I, I just want to clarify I don't see it in my own <laughs> life, like day to day. I don't, I'm not confronted with it. Well, actually, I am. If you I are. express a political or a. Uh, my point of view, then I, then I, then I get the backlash. Yeah. Um, and are you afraid? To, are you afraid to speak up? Um, no, it's more just I know it's going to be confrontation. And do you mind that? Sometimes no. Sometimes I, 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 I want to get into it. You want to? Yeah. Right. Because it's hard to be silent all the time. Yes. And just uh, it feels like you're lying when you're silent. Yes. It's a lie. So. And so you speak up. How do you feel about confrontation? You, you don't like confrontations most no, of the time? I don't mind just having a discussion, but it usually when someone else has an opinion, um, or people usually go with opinion rather than the facts, so it's hard to have a discussion when someone already has an opinion made up. Right. You know. And that's why you're not supposed to have a discussion with a crazy person. Right. You just put the truth out there and let them deal with it. Exactly. Don't argue with, it's like, it's like arguing with people who know the Bible. Have you ever met one of those people who know the Bible and you're trying to have a conversation and instead of having the conversation, they just quote the Bible? You're like, well, it's, you cannot sin if you're a Christian. And instead of them like communicating about that, well, 1 John chapter 8, verse 3 says this. So I'm like, well, what do you think about it? Well, uh, Luke, I'm like, <laughs> I had a guy call my show, nice guy, and he would try to have a conversation about the Bible, about these things, and he, every time I asked him a question, he'd just run to the Bible and just quote scriptures like two plus two is four to everything. And so I'm like, you got to go, goodbye. But I want you to learn to appreciate confrontation. You need it. Okay. And... Um, and you need it because without it, you can't grow. You can't grow without it, and you don't know your relationship with God without it. Mm. That makes sense? Yes. And so, are you married? No. Uh, are you dating? Open to it. Open to it. So you're not doing anything I'm not, right I'm now? Not, I'm, I'm single at the moment. Yeah, and the reason I bring that up because a lot of guys don't know how to have confrontations with their the woman that they're dating or married, engaged to or married, right? Yeah. And they need to learn how to do that because how else will you become a man or a woman of God if you run away from confrontations? Right. That makes sense? Yes, it does. I love confrontation. <laughs> I know. I watch you. Uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> because what, what happened was is that God took my anger away. Mm -hmm. And so when he took that away, he took away all fear. No fear. No doubt. So I don't feel it when it's happening inside of me or in my mind. It's like it's happening out there and I'm looking at a movie and I'm just a part of an event that's happening. That makes sense? Yes, it does. But beforehand, I had issues. With, I couldn't do the confrontation thing, especially with women. Because women will wear you down when you're weak. Have you noticed that? Absolutely. They never stop. You're like, okay, I had enough. Uh-uh. <laughs> I want blood. 
okay, okay, kill me. But, uh, but, and so, but if you don't have that anger, it's not happening to you. Mm -hmm. It's just a situation. Right. It's so amazing. Yes. That makes sense? Yes, it does. Have you overcome your anger? Working on it. Have you overcome your anger? No. Oh, thank you. And why not? I just became aware of it not too long ago when I discovered, um, discovered you on YouTube and I started a couple months ago. Yeah. And I've been aware of it and watching myself. Um, I think it's a process. Um, it's a process? To get rid of the anger? Yeah, why do you think that? If it was easy, I would just let it go. Um, why do you think it's a process? Um, just to unravel. It's, I think it's just very deep. Maybe it's been a way of life also, right. like memory or just a reaction. Amazing. And how did you become angry? Um, my, my, upper, my father, primarily. Your father made you angry? Yes. He caused you to become angry? Yes. Is this your first time here? Second. Second time here? What did your father do to make you angry? He was... Uh, Not uh, well tempered. Meaning what? Just, uh, angry himself, very angry himself. And he would take it out he on had you. No patience. Yeah. And um, and so ha why you have why haven't you gone to forgive him? You know about it for two months. You've been knowing about it for two months. Why put it off? Why not just? I I did two weeks. Uh, Father's Day. I showed up at his house. So, yeah. so why I, not? I showed up at his house on Father's Day. And what happened? Um, and it felt really good. I, I, I would not have shown up at his house. And it felt great to let it go. Did you tell him? I just said, Happy Father's Day. Uh, I didn't say, you mean as far as I forgive you? Yeah. Um, no, I did not. Why not? I don't, I don't think he would have known what I was talking about. Coward. Okay. You are a beta? Are you beta? No. Definitely You're not. You're not beta? No. So then why do you do with your father then? Um, so I would forgive him and, and he would say, what are you talking about? You don't know that. Okay. Isn't that right? I don't know that. You're right. So why are you letting the devil make you think that way? Then? Why are you going with the lies? Are you afraid to confront him? No. Then well, you should have taken advantage. You listened to the, your father, the devil. You had the perfect opportunity to forgive your father. And you know that however he acts, that's on him. It has nothing to do with you. Right. Because God will forgive you. He doesn't have to admit to anything. Right. And you can go free. Okay. You got to stand up, man. All right. Isn't that right? Yes, absolutely. And you're a white man. <laughs> we need white power. Okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Women are not going to like you if you don't stand up. Women hate weak men. It's true. Why you look at her? Just want to see her reaction. Uh, are you dating her? No, she's a friend of mine. Oh, is it true that women hate weak men? Um, yes. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> women hate weak men. So you have to go back and forgive your father. Okay. And don't think in your mind that it's a process. All right. That's Satan setting you up right there. The moment I forgave, everything changed. It wasn't a process. It changed right. It was just taken away from me. The moment I forgave. Okay. I'll do it. Yeah. And um, you've heard me say that every thought is a lie, right? Yes. So why are you still believing them? How do you decipher which thoughts are lies and which every? thoughts are the truth? What does every mean? <laughs> every one. Then what do you go by if, it's, if, every, if, it's all, if every thought is a lie? Revelation. Okay. Because what happens is... When you doubt every thought, then you become aware of the voice of God, which is a voiceless voice. It's common sense that's constantly being revealed to you okay. without words. All right. So you automatically go to that because you have to believe in one or the other. Right. So when you doubt the lie, you will believe the truth. Okay. And you knew this as a kid, but when you became angry, you forgot. Right. That makes sense? Yes, it does. And so you got, have you forgiven your mother already? Yes, I have. You went to her? Well, um, she passed away five years ago. Oh, I'm sorry about that. Thank you. And how were you able to forgive her? I, I don't, I don't have, I never really had any anger towards my mother. Okay. Uh, She's a, a perfect woman? No. She, she didn't get on your nerves at times? 
Not really. No. You didn't wish you would go away? Just go no, away I, for I, now. I was, I, was, I was living with my father. Oh, good. <laughs> okay. Well, your father, if what you're telling me is true, and I believe you, your father's a woman. The anger of a man is that of a woman, so he's a beta female. He was raised more by his mother. Yeah, and he can't help himself. Yeah. All right? Okay. So go and forgive him so you can be free, man. Okay. And just like that, you'll be free. And everything will change. I was so weak and pathetic when I had that anger. I was afraid of women. Hmm. You ever been afraid of a woman? Yeah? He said yes. How about you? No. Well, I mean, yes, to be honest, sometimes yes. Yeah, be yeah. honest. Right. Every beta male is afraid of women. All right. And you can help it because you have your father's identity, which is the mother's identity. But once you let that go, you're going to treat everybody the same. You're going to treat everybody with perfect love, even your enemy. Isn't that amazing? Yes, it is. Yeah. So do that and let me know how it goes. I will. Any other questions for me? No. no. Thank you. All right. Uh-huh. That was fun. <laughs> yeah. It's so easy to be free. And then you see that there's no such thing as racism, sexism, homophobism, Islamophobism, no isms. It's just right or wrong, good or evil. It really is straight up that. Nothing else. We've been lied to.